My research actually originated from my interest in looking into psychological warfare. And the first sound weapon that I found was related to my research in Vietnam. And it was called Ghost Tape Number 10. And Ghost Tape Number 10 is a sound weapon that the Americans produced during the Vietnam War in 1969 in order to demoralize Viet Cong soldiers. And they made a sound recording that was around four minutes long where they um, tried to record a ghost. And that ghost was a Vietnamese soldier that died in war. And he is trying to get his friends to go home and stop fighting. So when I found that um, sound weapon, it was really interesting to me because they basically recorded um, that tape and then broadcasted that throughout the landscape um, in the forests and jungle um, via helicopters, but also via soldiers wearing backpacks. And yes, so somehow when I got um, invited to do an exhibition at Nottingham Contemporary, I was just continuing that research into psyops and into um, sound as a weapon and I by chance found the Havana syndrome. The Havana syndrome is a supposedly sound weapon that happened in um, 2016. So um, the Americans accused Cuba of having developed a sound weapon that you supposedly can't hear or the hearing is so um, confused that they don't quite know what the source is. And um, it got coined the Havana syndrome because it affected US embassy staff that were based in Havana. And what happened is that the US embassy staff, um, you know, experienced headaches, nausea, nose bleeding, and their brains got scanned and medical research found that they had, you know, symptoms close to um, brain concussions. So yeah, for my own show, I got my brain scanned here at Nottingham Trent University. And we made MRI, DTI and EEG scans of my brain while listening to the sound weapon, the so-called Havana syndrome. And yes, it was quite an interesting um, experience. So we basically played the sound weapon, which is a reconstruction of the sound weapon that the Americans made in order to use that within court to um, show how perhaps the sound weapon sounded like. And um, yes, we basically scanned my brain and found certain areas in my brain that were active. So what you are seeing in the show is six brain scans from different angles of my brain. And the black dots within the brain scans are actually sort of um, abnormal activities or, um, or specially activated areas. And what was interesting is that the result of the brain scans was actually that my visual um, my visual brain was extremely active when listening to the sound weapon. So I guess it's sort of like the imaginary side of the brain that got activated. Mm, for me, the brain scans in the exhibition are also a comparison between the scientific research that you see in one of the um, news articles on one of the display screens and they create sort of this dialogue between what happened to the US embassy staff and myself and how I myself exposed myself to the sound weapon and eventually um, to my own sound work. So we also translated um, my brain waves that got recorded while listening to the sound weapon into sound frequencies. So what you hear throughout the exhibition um, 
is a sound work that consists of five channels and um, the five channels are actually located throughout the exhibition and um, each channel has actually one purpose. So out of one speaker you only hear the original sound weapon which is the Havana syndrome. Out of another speaker you hear my brain waves reacting to the sound weapon and then again um, from another speaker you actually hear water pumps that are um, being recorded actually with inside this building at Nottingham Contemporary. So we went um, yeah, to the, I guess, underground basement, yeah, basement where um, we recorded um, the pumps. And then again in another um, sound channel, you actually hear something that is sort of um, a form of branding or it is a bit more like a rhythmical um, translation. And for that, I worked with um, my um, musician, Villa Heimela, and we made jiggles out of the sound weapon. So it's just um, a rhythmic translation of the sound weapon, actually. But um, that layer of the sound work addresses perhaps something else in the exhibition, which is the relationship between the display screens and the way news are being um, communicated and how close that at times can be um, towards a political agenda or towards a way of nation branding. So yeah, hopefully it, it brings an, another layer to the show. The display screens um, have four newspaper articles on them. One is um, about the Havana syndrome and the brain scans that have been conducted in order to prove that um, the sonic attack occurred. And the second newspaper article is about how um, Donald Trump pulls out of Cuba and basically shuts down the embassy in Havana. The third newspaper article in the exhibition is about PSYOPs psychological operations and for me it was important to have a newspaper article about that because within the PSYOPs article I actually speak about the sound weapons that the US created. Um, in my instance it's about one that occurred in Vietnam. In a strange way you have these fences and pillars and you enter a space where um, the display screens could be maybe one that you find uh, at the subway or at a bus stop and you encounter these news that are quite quick and short but um, they're informative and still they, they influence you throughout the day and I was interested in using that form of um, reading information and how that might affect the way we yeah, cons consume knowledge. And I'm extremely interested in the links between information and propaganda and political agency and how certain narratives are created throughout history through news and how news are being told. So hopefully um, the exhibition is a way to reflect how scientific research um, political narratives are intertwined and how the way news are told are never completely neutral but always have you know a subjective edge to them. Inkoprint translates into German like something like um, Schwarz auf Weiß which is close to black on white which is something that I guess you know, in code print is something that is just a matter of fact. And in this exhibition, there are a lot of facts, but I'm interested in actually how these facts um, can be manipulated and can be used in various ways and how scientific facts can be used in certain ways. When I entered the exhibition space for the first time, I was scared of my own work because <laughs> I create large scale installations that 
I see for the first time myself when I enter the exhibition space. Um, it's impossible to, you know, build this in my studio. So when I entered the galleries here for the first time, I was quite shocked of my own ideas and the scale of this installation. And I think that's part of why it is amazing to be an artist. You imagine certain scenarios and once they materialize, they can surprise you.